Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today marks the 40th anniversary of the bombings in Hyde Park and Regent Park, and uh, tomorrow sees the 50th anniversary of Bloody Friday. Such terror by the provisional IRA was barbaric and shameful, bringing untold grief to countless families. And our thoughts are with all those who lost loved ones during the Troubles. We as a government remain determined to help build a better shared future for all the people of Northern Ireland. Mr Speaker, I have spoken to the Chair of the National Fire Council uh, last night and this morning about the heroic work of firefighters in recent days. I know the whole House will want to thank them and all our frontline services who have been working hard to keep us safe. My right honourable friend, the Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster, will be making an oral statement later. Mr Speaker, I know colleagues will wish to join me in wishing England's Lionesses well in their quarter-final match against Spain in Brighton this evening. And I know that the House will want to congratulate Jake Whiteman, uh, who produced a stunning run to take gold in the 1500 metres of the World Championships in Oregon. Mr Speaker, as you rightly say, last week I I told the House that this was possibly, uh, that last week was possibly my last PMQs. Uh, This uh, week, Mr Speaker, probably, certainly, uh, will be. (laughs) my last PMQs from this dispatch box, uh, uh, or any other dispatch box. (laughs) Mr Speaker, this morning I had meetings with ministerial colleagues and others, and in addition to my duties in this House, I will have further such meetings later. Keir Stubb. Can I start by saying to the Prime Minister that I do know that the relationship between a Prime Minister and Leader of the Opposition is never easy. And this one's proved no exception to the rule. But I would like to take this opportunity to wish him, his wife and his family the best for the future. Can I also put on record our gratitude to the Fire and Rescue Services for all their courageous work yesterday in extreme temperatures. All our thoughts are with those affected by the fires, particularly those that have lost their homes. I join the Prime Minister in his comments about the bombings in Hyde Park and the IRA bombings. I also join him in his comments about the Lionesses. The coverage starts at 7.30 tonight on BBC One, and I'm sure the whole country will be roaring them on. And for anyone who doesn't fancy football, EastEnders is on. So if you'd rather watch outrageous characters taking lumps out of themselves, you've got a choice. Albert Square or the Tory leadership debates on catch-up. Uh, on that topic, Mr Speaker, why, why does the Prime Minister think that those vying to replace him decided to pull out of the Sky debate last night? Yeah. Prime Minister. Uh, well, m- Mr Speaker, uh, I, 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 I'm not following this thing particularly closely, but my... <laughs> My, 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 impression, my impression is that there's been a quite a lot of debate already, and I think the public, I think the public are, are having, they're having an ample opportunity to view the talent, uh, Mr. Speaker. That any one of any one of which, any one of which, as I say before, like some household detergent, would wipe the floor. Uh, with the, with a, with a, I mean, this t- today, today is, happens to be just about the anniversary of, of the exit from lockdown last year. And do you remember, do you remember what he said? Uh, he said, yeah, I'm going to remind him, he said it was reckless. It was because we were able to take that decision, Mr Speaker, supported by every single one of those Conservative candidates opposed by him, that we had the fastest economic growth in the G7. We're now able to help families up and down the country. If we listened to him, it wouldn't have been possible, Mr Speaker. And I don't think they'll be listening to him either. Well, well, I'm impressed he managed to get through that with a straight face, actually. Um, I think the truth is this. They organised the TV debates because they thought it would be a great chance for the public to hear from the candidates first hand. Then disaster struck because the public actually heard from the candidates (laughs) first hand. But but I am interested uh, in what he makes of the battle for his job. So let me start with a simple one. Does the Prime Minister agree with his former Chancellor that plans put forward by the other candidates are, in his words, I've got them here, nothing more than the fantasy economics of unfunded spending promises? Well, I will 
Welsh Prime well, Minister Speaker, they know all about fantasy economics because uh, they, they've committed already already committed to £94 billion of extra tax and, uh, and spending, uh, Mr Speaker, which every household in this country would have to pay for to the tune of about £2,100. It's thanks to the, uh, the former Chancellor's management of the economy, thanks to this government's management of the economy, we had growth in May of 0.5%. We have more people uh, in paid employment than at any time in the history of this country, Mr Speaker. Uh, and I leave, I'm, I'm proud to be leaving office right now with unemployment at or near a 50-year low, Mr Speaker. When, when they left office, it was at 8%. That's the difference between them and us. Um, uh, Mr Speaker, every Labour pledge made under my leadership is fully costed. Those buying, those buying to protect him, they Mr Speaker, those vying to replace him have racked up £330 billion of unfunded spending commitments. But I do note that the Prime Minister didn't agree with his former Chancellor. So what about his Foreign Secretary? She was withering about the government's economic record. She said, again her words, here they are, if Rishi has got this great plan for growth, why haven't we seen it in the last two and a half years at the Treasury? That's a fair question, is it, Prime Minister? Uh, actually, Mr Speaker, I think everybody would uh, uh, agree that what you saw in the last two and a half years was because of the pandemic, the biggest fall in output, uh, for, biggest fall in output for 300 years, which this government dealt with and, and coped with magnificently. By, by distributing vaccines faster than any other European government, faster than any other major economy, which would not have been possible if we had listened to him. And that's why, Mr Speaker, we have the fiscal firepower that is necessary to help families up and down the country, making tax cuts for virtually everybody paying national insurance contributions. Uh, the, the difference between La Labour and the Conservatives, Mr Speaker, uh, there's a crucial philosophical difference. Under Labour, families on low incomes get most of their income from benefits. Under us, they get most of it from earnings. Because we believe in jobs, jobs, jobs. That's the difference, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, inflation is up again this morning, and millions are struggling with a cost of living crisis. And he, he's decided to come down from his gold wallpapered bunker for one last time to tell us that everything's fine. I am going to miss the delusion. But his Foreign Secretary didn't stop there, Mr Speaker. She also said that the former Chancellor's 15 tax rises are leading the country into recession. Yeah. Yeah. And the That's member okay. for Portsmouth North was even more scathing. She said, again her words, our public services are in a desperate state. Yeah. Yeah. We can't continue with what we've been doing because it clearly isn't working. Yeah. Yeah. Has the Prime Minister told her who's been running our public services for the last 12 years? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, look, Mr Speaker, this is absolute. And again, he's doing this completely satirical. This is the government. This is the government that is investing £650 billion pounds, uh, in infrastructure, in skills, in technology. He talks about public services. What really matters to people in this country right now is getting their, getting their appointments, getting their operations, fixing the COVID battles. That's what we're doing. Fixing the ambulances. That's what he should be talking about, Mr Speaker. And, and that's why we voted through. That's why we passed the £39 billion pound health and care levy, Mr Speaker, which they opposed. What, every time something needs to be done, Mr. Speaker, they try to oppose it. Now, he's just a great pointless human bollard, Mr. Speaker. That's what he is. Mr. Mr. Speaker, if only, if only it was satirical. It's what the future candidates think of his. Mr. Speaker. We want to get through PMQs because there's quite a few of you wanting to catch my eye. It will be more helpful if we get through in order to do that. Keir Starmer. I appreciate they may not want to hear what their future leader thinks of their record in government, but I think the country needs to know. If only it were satirical, Prime Minister. It's what the candidates think of the record. Yeah. Yeah. But among the mudslinging, there was one very important point, because the member for Saffron Walden 
claimed that she warned the former Chancellor mm. that he was handing taxpayer money directly yeah. to fraudsters in yeah. Covid loans. Yeah. She says he dismissed her worries wow. and that, as a result, he cost the taxpayer £17 billion. Yeah. Yeah. Does the Prime Minister think that she's telling the truth? Yeah. Prime Minister. OK, well, this is the, one of the last blasts from Captain Hindsight, uh, Mr Speaker, because, uh, or, at, least to, at least to me, uh, at least to me, because, because they were the party, I remember, they were the party who were, who were so, so desperate uh, for us to be uh, hiring their friends with, to get to, with PPE, they wanted a football agent uh, to supply, and a theatrical costumier uh, to supply PPE. Do you remember, Mr, Mr. Speaker? We, ha we had to get that stuff at record speed. Uh, we produced £408 billion worth of support uh, for families and for businesses up and down the country, Mr Speaker, and the only reason we were able to do it at, at such speed is because we'd managed the economy in a sensible and moderate way. And Labour, every time they've left office, is with unemployment higher, they're economically illiterate, Mr Speaker, and they would wreck the economy. I think the message coming out of this leadership contest is pretty clear. They got us into this mess and they've no idea how to get us out of it. The Foreign Secretary says we can't go on with our current economic policy. The member for Portsmouth North bemoaned the fact that what we've been doing has not been good enough. And the member for Saffron Walden probably puts it best when she simply asked, why should the public trust us? We haven't exactly covered ourselves in glory. Their words, their future leaders' words. They've trashed every part of their record in government, yeah. from dental care and ambulance response times to the highest taxes in 70 years. Yeah. What message does it send when the candidates to be Prime Minister can't find a single decent thing to say about him, about each other, or their record in government? Yeah. Mr Speaker, what does it say? What does it, what does it say about him? But no one can name a single policy of the late, after three years of the Labour opposition apart from putting up taxes. He's one of those pointless plastic bollards you find uh, around, a, around a deserted roadworks on a motorway, Mr Speaker. Uh, we got Brexit done. He voted against it 48 times. We got this country fast out of Covid in spite of everything uh, he would have kept and when he would have kept us in lockdown. We're fixing social care, Mr Speaker, when they have no plan and no ideas of their own. And we're now bringing forward measures to, uh, with, in the face of strikes to outlaw wildcat strikes, Mr Speaker. Uh, I can tell you, to outlaw wildcat strikes, I can tell you why, I can tell you why he does that, that funny wooden <laughs> flapping gesture. I'll tell you why he does that funny wooden flapping gesture. Because, Mr Speaker, he's got, he's a, he's got the union barons pulling his strings from beneath him. That's the truth. Million pounds, Mr. Speaker. We've restored our democracy and our independence. Uh, we've got this country through COVID, and I'm proud to say that whether it comes to tackling climate change or sticking up for Ukraine, we have led the world on the international stage. And I want to thank my friends and colleagues on these benches for everything that they have done.